Today, Eagle Rare stands as the best-selling premium product from the most awarded distillery in America. Nine years ago, Buffalo Trace removed the word single barrel from the label, and yet, if you watch or read any media on this bottle, you are bound to hear some version of the following story. It used to be a Te single barrel. Technically, these still kind of are a single barrel, yeah. except for... Notice that they removed the single barrel marker on it. Because they went to an automated bottling line. They don't really batch it either. They dump it, then they start filling bottles, and when they get to the end, they, you know, dump another barrel. And but as far as I know, every single one of these Eagle Rares is single barrel-ish. It's technically not a single barrel, but it basically is. If you know different, let me know. Worry not, Brother Bruzel. I'm here for you. But friends, that's just the headliner. During my investigation, I found two other prevalent myths surrounding our favorite patriotic poor. And today I intend on correcting the record. Welcome to the Whiskey Show. My name's Sonny and today we get to dress up and play detective in an attempt to get to the bottom of this bamboozle. Later on, we sit down with John and find out how Eagle Rare stacks up against two of its contemporaries to help you decide if it's worth the hunt. So grab a drink, take off your pants and jacket. It's gonna be a long one. Our first myth claims that Eagle Rare was introduced as a wild turkey competitor. The Eagle was formally introduced in the mid-70s to the Seagram Spirit portfolio by Charles Beam. At the time, wild turkey was one of the most successful whiskeys on the market, so it does make sense that to create a new product, they would just rip off a successful one. I guess my main hesitation in believing this is just based off of how different the modern day products are. To me, it just seems like some people say this because it sounds good and it makes sense in hindsight. So I found the idea dubious. I was wrong. Super wrong. We have two good sources for this. Mark Brown, the president of Sazerac, Buffalo Trace's parent company, well, he said it, and he's usually a reliable source. But in my defense, Mark Brown was like 17 years old at the time, and he was working for his family's pub in the UK, so I just wanted something a little more concrete than his word. Thankfully, in my research, I stumbled across this wildly aggressive magazine ad from 1978. The 10-year-old eagle versus the 8-year-old turkey. They straight up stole the end of that ad from a Maker's Mark ad from almost a decade prior. It's one of my favorite lines of all time. It tastes expensive. And is. Looking at this ad almost makes it seem like they designed the label of Eagle Rare to sit next to Wild Turkey on the shelf and make it feel like a b****. They were clearly targeting the turkey, so I feel comfortable calling this one true. Our second myth comes courtesy of a curious Redditor who happened to score an old Prentice distilled bottle of Eagle Rare and was excited to share a review. The OP found that this old bottle was remarkably similar to the modern day product and they were surprised at how similar the profiles were between two distilleries. Here's the thing, not two distilleries. That's not an old Prentice bottle, even though it says it is. So remember how Eagle Rare was made for Seagram? Well, back in the day, Seagram was a Goliath with many distilleries under their belt. Our boy Chuck was the master distiller of the old Prentice facility. 50-ish years later, we now call this place Four Roses but the only bottles of Eagle Rare distilled there would have been between the mid-70s when the brand was introduced and 1989 when Seagram sold the brand to Sazerac. Notably, they sold a few, Eagle Rare, Benchmark, and Dr. McKillicuddy's Schnapps, which later became Fireball and now they're getting sued over. Anyways, the comments on this post mention how when you buy a brand, it's common to buy existing stock of the product, which could explain why old juice is bottled even after the brand is sold. But that's not what happened here. Our boy, Marky B, was actually working at Sazerac at this time, and he's confirmed that they didn't buy any barrel inventory. Instead, they bought the name Old Prentice and used it on the labels. So between 75 and 2014-ish, all labels of Eagle Rare say Old Prentice on the back label, but any bottle after 1997 is going to be Buffalo Trace. Anything between 89 and 97 is a wild card. You see, Sazerac was building a spirit portfolio without owning a distillery. So, just like any good booze tube channel, they became an NDP and began sourcing whiskey. 
Colonel Chuck Cowdery reports that for a period of time, these were sourced from Heaven Hill, but they're not transparent about where they were receiving aged stock from. So if you have an old bottle of this, it's anyone's guess to what's in it. Even though Sazerac bought Buffalo Trace in 1992, according to their bottling manager, they didn't switch production over until 97 for Eagle Rare. If you're lucky enough to find an old bottle of Eagle Rare in an attic or an estate sale, there's an easy way to tell where it came from. While the bottle design didn't really change in 30 years, the label did. Any Four Roses distillate will list Lawrenceburg, Kentucky on the front. Any Sazerac sourced Eel Rare will list New Orleans as the bottle's location. Note, this doesn't actually tell us anything about where the whiskey was sourced from. The label just says New Orleans because that's where the Saz office is. And finally, anything bottled after 1997 will say Frankfurt on the label so you know it's from Buffalo Trace. One exception to this rule. If you have an early 2000s handle of Eagle Rare, it could still have New Orleans on the label. This is because they pre-printed labels and the TTB allowed them to use the remaining labels as a cost-saving measure. For those bottles, you'd have to check the UPC or the laser code of the origin. And in 2005, we see the first official change of the spec. They keep the age, change the bottle, drop the proof from 101 to 90, and they make it a single barrel product across the board. This would remain the standard Eagle Rare until 2014 when Buffalo Trace moves the age statement from the neck to the back of the label and totally removes the word single barrel, which is how we got here in the first place. But none of that explains where the idea of a single barrel-ish whiskey came from. We have to go deeper to a now-deleted blog post featuring the transcript of an interview with none other than Mark Brown. This is a big moment for me. I've listened to Eagle Rare fans parrot this quote for years without being able to find a reliable source. The blog is from Clay Risen, who is not a blogger, he's a journalist. He now works for the New York Times as an obituaries author. <laughs> okay, Clay. <laughs> My conversation with Brown covered a lot of ground, but I was particularly interested in the story behind the recent changes to Eagle Rare. In recent months, the distillery dropped the single barrel designation and moved the age statement to the back of the label, a precursor, many worried, to dropping the age statement altogether. Both changes, Brown said, had come as a result of a decision to expand the production of Eagle Rare to a second bottling line. In the past, Eagle Rare was bottled exclusively in the Blanton's Bottling Hall at Buffalo Trace, a relatively small facility where much of the work is done by hand. In the single barrel bottling process, a barrel's worth of whiskey goes from the bottling tank to the filler in a short length of pipe, and the whole process is small enough to ensure that each barrel's worth goes through the run alone. But the second bottling line, at a much larger hall, has a much larger pipe between bottling tank and filler, so long that the whiskey from one barrel might unintentionally mix with the whiskey from another. There's no legal definition of single barrel, of course, but Brown said that the risk of such intermixing would violate the company's internal definition of single barrel, so the designation was dropped. The reason I am convinced that Eagle Rare is now a small batch product is because it goes through the same process as every other small batch product. Like they mentioned, at Buffalo Trace, there are two processing halls. The Blanton's Bottling Hall, where single barrels and craft products are handled. Every step of this involves humans, and it isn't cheap. Everything else goes through a facility called Regage. This is a much larger warehouse with a line that processes. And it could be as many as 10, 15 barrels in a row. will start being dumped in that dual layer of mesh. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't chill filtering. It's this not is like just chill moving filtering. particles. And then once we're finished with this filtration, it's time to put it in spirit tanks. And as they enter into the spirit tanks, they use a scale and this will allow them to, to know the weight that's in each of the tanks and they'll convert that to gallons. And once we're finished with storage here, it is sent to processing where they'll finish it up and head it to bottling. Hey, Sonny from the future here. While I was editing this, I realized that pretty much everything I mention here is either speculative or circumstantial, and that's just not going to be enough to convince some people. And who knows, maybe there is a secret Eagle Rare processing hall somewhere where the single barrelish story could survive. The only way to definitively prove this would be for Buffalo Trace to label Eagle Rare as a small batch product, and they aren't going to do that. And the only reputable website that actually calls Eagle Rare a small batch is Whiskey University, but I want more. 
So I had a Hail Mary idea. To enter most spirits competitions, you have to do all the work. You have to send in a few bottles and pick the category that represents your product the best. So, if we scrub through the insane list of awards for Eagle Rare, we can find an award from the LA Spirits competition where Eagle Rare was awarded Best in Category for 2019. What category? Whiskey. Small batch bourbon aged 10 years or less. So that is the best evidence we have to show that even Buffalo Trace considers Eagle Rare a small batch product. And as the helpful tour guide said, what is actually dumped here? It's is everything it, that's a batch bourbon. Anything that's batch, so yes. not not single barrel. No, we do not do any single barrels in here. So does it matter if it's a single barrel? No, of course not. Eagle Rare is a great product with a great price. And did they lie? Probably not. I still look at Mark Brown as an extremely transparent man, even though he's a marketer. And honestly, it is 100% possible that what he described existed in a former iteration of the Regage facility. Buffalo Trace has been through several rounds of renovation since 2014, and they've opened an entirely new state-of-the-art bottling facility. I just thought the question was interesting and I feel like I found the answer. So with all that behind us, let's move on to the rules of the blind. Today's blind is a semi-blind, so John and I both know what's going into it, and we are comparing Smooth Ambler's Contradiction, Eagle Rare, and Buffalo Trace. Eagle Rare and Buffalo Trace are extremely similar products. The only difference is in age and potentially the barrel location of the warehouse, but that's about it. The way I think about it, if a barrel is maturing more quickly, it's likely to turn into Buffalo Trace around six to eight years. If it's maturing more slowly, it is likely to go into Eagle Rare. As for Smooth Ambler's contradiction, I once had a liquor store manager whose opinion I respect tell me that this was close enough to blind against Eagle Rare. That being said, the one time we tried that, John smelled both of them and immediately knew which one was Eagle Rare. But, because of the ridiculous label, I've started to call the bottle Common Elephant as an opposite to Eagle Rare, and I do think it's a good pour, but today we find out whether it's more of an imitator or a competitor. For your convenience, I did my best to label on screen what glass was either in our hand or what we were talking about. This sort of falls apart towards the end, but we did our best to keep them in the same order, so hopefully you can follow along easily. And really quickly, if you've made it this far into the video, I have a pinned comment below with questions for people who frequently watch whiskey videos. I'm working on several videos with the ambition of making the best whiskey content on the planet, and your input would be massively valuable, especially right now while I'm releasing my initial run of experimental videos. On to the blind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Whiskey Show. As always with me, I have John, and today the game is simple. Eagle Rare? More like Eagle Wear? John, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is that we're gonna drink some Eagle Rare. The bad news is that we're out of Eagle Rare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Eagle Rare ask. That's not Super Eagle Rare to me. For which one? Two was two. less Eagle Rare to me. I think it could be two because Eagle Rare does have like a soft think, nose on it. I think that this you one, might be right. One is very <laughs> pungent. It It's like sewer, uh, like a, a sewery water. So two of them being Buffalo Trace products. Hypothetically, we should be able to narrow down the two that are identical. But that requires us to actually be accurate. <laughs> if we're wrong, it means that Smooth Ambler's Contradiction is a very good analog to the Buffalo Trace flavor profile. Yeah. I, I would agree. Okay. Okay. One. Try one. I think that might be the contradiction. I... I'm almost like agree. agree. I wholeheartedly agree with you. <laughs> On smelling all of these, they all seem like they were from the same family. But without tasting the other two, that does not taste like Eagle Rare no, or Buffalo Trace. Absolutely. The beginning mm -hmm. actually is pretty similar to But it's like the it. aftertaste that you get, yeah, is very bitter and not pleasant. It's not about like the complexity. Above all else, it's the sippability. 
Oh yeah. Eagle yeah. Rare is so sippable. So one is probably not Eagle Rare. Two, very pleasant. I think I enjoyed that. That's just very smooth. Very, there's nothing crazy about it, but that, like that's just very much Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare. <laughs> there's nothing crazy about the actual flavors. I feel like I'm wow. Now. Oh, they've tried three though. Yeah. yeah. I tried three too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 while you were telling, while you were telling me how good two was, I was sipping three, okay. and then I went to two. This is not as far off as we were pretending it was. This no. is yeah. for the fact that it is probably more expensive than Eagle Rare. Like hypothetically unmarked up, if you found Contradiction and Eagle Rare next to each other, Eagle Rare is probably cheaper and it's definitely better. Yeah. But if you literally can't find Buffalo Trace and you literally can't find Eagle Let's Rare. Just grab the contradiction. That would be great if it was just all completely reversed though. I really don't think it is. I don't think it can be. I don't think it's possible. <sighs> yeah. I don't think this is bad. No. But I think in comparison, this is this is definitely the, the one I want to drink the least of. It's the lowest hanging fruit. <laughs> and I, and honestly, as a poor man's Eagle Rare, I think Buffalo Trace is the only option. Flavor-wise, I think that the Buffalo Trace is more... If this is Buffalo Trace, it's more interesting yeah. and complicated. I, I did say, like, I thought two was very soft on the nose, but maybe I'm, I'm thinking three might be even softer. But flavor on two, I would argue, yeah, is, is, is better than the flavor. It, it punches harder. The, if they're not the yeah, same three, proof, yeah. they're within one of each other. Yeah. I think they're both. This seems like it's a, like it almost tastes like it's a little bit watered down. Yeah. If this is truly buffalo, which trace. is which is what good buffalo yeah. trace then tastes like. like. Okay, cool. So we're calling that as contradiction. Absolutely. This is this is almost. I mean, it feels clear. Two could totally be Eagle Rare. Though. Yeah, so that's what, that's what I was two, just thinking now. It's, two yeah. keeps getting better so, to me. So three, some like notes of like fruitiness, which I attribute more to Buffalo Trace. Okay. Mm. So this is out. Absolutely. That's not that's not Absolutely. Buffalo Trace. Between two and three, mm, I don't have a lot remaining of either. Well, you should finish your contradictions. You couldn't possibly leave that on the table. I might go three as Buffalo. The, the subdued nose gives this away as Eagle Rare. Yeah. More than almost anything. Yeah. My that's what makes Eagle Rare so like weird. To be fair though, I think three is very enjoyable. If you're saying that three is Buffalo Trace, I'll say that three is Eagle Rare. So make your pick, because I'll okay. contradict you. Well, I'm gonna contradict. The contradiction. How funny will it be when one this is one was Eagle Rare? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with three as Buffalo. Just cause like there's a little harshness on harshness still on it. Two is just too soft. And it I, has find, Eagle Rare. It I has find Eagle Rare. I find the harshness on three. On three. Yeah. I yeah. mean, sorry, no, on two. I mean, I got oh, you the harshness you're talking about. I find on two. I found it on three. A couple sips. And that's why I think that this is no. There's dog hair in that. <laughs> so we're split. Where's your Where's your key? My key? Which key? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, really hit that one. Okay, should I tell you? Um, should I tell you my numbers? Is Oh, uh, you're standoffish, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Wrong. Is three orange? <laughs> no. What color is three? Three is pink. You got it. Did I? You got it. Yeah. Two, if two, two, is two orange, has to be. Two is, if two is two orange. Is orange. And one is brown. Dog shit contradiction. <laughs> Did you notice I made it brown? <laughs> it was a good fight. It was a good so fight. That, contradiction. contradiction is fine. For $40, 
Versus these two, it is a very hard sell. Well, <laughs> that's uh, hard enough to find. <laughs> Blanton's store picks. We go to Justin's. Liquor. Are really? <laughs> we. Uh, I think they have a good sale. I've heard. <laughs> Unfortunately, somebody already seized that opportunity. 